<laughs> You're welcome. Sorry. All right. So, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and welcome to this group mentorship session. My name is Dr. Wangare. I'll be your facilitator. Today, we have a really interesting topic of discussion. But before we continue, I will tell you a little bit more about Author Aid. Please introduce yourselves in the chat. Kindly tell us your name, institution, if any, uh, your research interests or interests, uh, if you are a member of Author Aid and which journal club you belong to. Also, what are your expectations of today's topic on an African scholar's experience of studying abroad? We'll be very, very happy to hear from you. I can see already we have uh, some introductions in the chat. I see Ross Barasa, Program Support DAAD. Looking forward to learning more here. Wow, welcome, Rose. Isaac Warambo, Member Journal Club. I guess you mean the Ada Africa Journal Club. Thank you, Isaac. And then I see Tabida. Hello, I am Tabida Buchna from INASP, Program Coordinator based in the UK. Thank you so much. Keep introducing yourselves. I'll be happy to know more about where we are all coming from and what our expectations are. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Author Aid, Journal Club, and the kind of work that we do there. So Author Aid is an organization which is a free pioneering global network that provides support for researchers in low and middle income countries. Uh, a lot of online platforms are hosted by other aid, which offer free online courses, such as in research writing, proposal writing, covering all aspects of the writing and publishing pipeline. So there is also a lot of personal mentoring by highly published scholars who are ready and willing to uh, work with mentees who identify them through the author aid website. So I would like to also ask you to go to the author aid website and under the stewards team, you can read more about the work I do there overseeing mentorship programs. Author aid is based in the UK and uh, it runs several journal club groups. What is an online journal club? A journal club is a group of individuals in a particular field or shared interest group who come together to discuss research papers in peer reviewed journals. When you join a journal club, you've got to be ready to be actively involved in scholarly discussions, meeting periodically to discuss journal articles, sharing tips, especially for young researchers who may really benefit from you know, uh, the space to learn and grow together. So um, the online journal club groups uh, started, I think, about two years ago and have been quite active. And there are a number of groups based on the field of study. So currently, this group mentorship session today is hosted by the Author Aid journal club social sciences group so far there are about four groups the social sciences group is one of the journal club groups there is also the education and research communication that one is hosted on the author aid google forum then there is the biomedicine and healthcare journal club group hosted on facebook we also have the environmental biology chemistry and toxicology group hosted on WhatsApp. So since um, we are now in a global village, we have a number of different platforms, all of them, you know, running groups and people able to join. You can join as many groups as you like, but of course, be prepared for lots of reading and learning. And of course, so far, we don't have a group to cover every area of interest, but they're not just about <laughs> that we also learn cross-cutting research skills, such as how to read and analyze papers. So that's 
just a little brief about what we do at the Author Aid Journal Club groups. I joined Author Aid from a course I actually studied, and I really, really appreciate Author Aid for the trainings that they have hosted over the last few months. Also, look out for those trainings. They are MOOCs. I'm sure most of you know what MOOCs are massive open online courses. And uh, from there, I met this whole community of people learning and growing, including our guest speaker today, who I'm just about to introduce. So um, as we continue, kindly post your comments and questions in the chat. If you have any concerns, inquiries, feel free to do that. A lot of the information that I just mentioned is on the Author Aid website. So um, you'll find it easy to join in case you're interested and you're not yet a member of Author Aid. Um, INAS is of course the organization, you know, supporting Author Aid and we are glad that Tabitha could join us today. Thank you. So, I have posted the link in the chat as well, the oh, link to oh, your okay. profile and the journal clubs. Oh, thank you, Tabitha. That was really useful. Um, this information is on the website, but Tabitha has been kind enough to post it in the, in the chat. So please feel free to sign up. It's easy to sign up. So I will proceed to introduce our guest speaker who is a native of Nigeria and currently in the US. And uh, Mr. Benga Elufisan is a sociologist, scholar and member of the Author Aid Social Sciences Journal Club since May, 2019. He is currently a student of Master of Science in Sociology at Mississippi mm -hmm. State University in, of course, the state of Mississippi mm -hmm. in the United States of America, where he is examining the lived experience of disadvantaged farmers. So a lot of the sociology around food security, this is just really amazing. He graduated in the year 2019 with a Bachelor of Science in Sociology and Anthropology from Obafemi Awolo University in Nigeria. His areas of interest are human development and sustainable development, social change and development, globalization, social policy, and rural sociology. Today, he will unpack his transition journey as a global scholar abroad. So today we have an interesting talk lined up on the experience of living abroad and studying abroad. And I would like at this time to welcome you. Uh, Gwenga, feel free to spend as much time as you want. <laughs> we have up to the top of the hour and we might want to leave a few minutes, you know, at the end for questions. But I think uh, the audience today from the chats is highly interested in just learning from you, getting your experience of studying abroad. How did you even get there? And uh, you know what prompted you to decide to, to proceed abroad and your experience so far up to now. I'm sure you've now settled in and are on course with your postgraduate master's program. So welcome, sir. I think you're muted. <laughs> Kindly unmute. Okay. There you go. All right. Um, I want to say good morning because it's my own morning here. It's just at 6, 12 a.m. from this end. Wow, I, good morning. <laughs> I want to say good morning to everybody that is um, uh, on this platform at this moment. I really appreciate uh, your availability. Uh, before I go on, as, as a usual person, like this is very usual of me, I want to appreciate the almighty God for this very opportunity for the grace. And at the same time, I want to also appreciate somebody so much here today, who is uh, Dr. Joyce. <laughs> she, she, ever since I met her, she has been a very wonderful uh, person, and I cannot take that for granted, even before we... Uh, started talking about this issue of uh, coming to speak here or something. So she has been very amazing. Anytime I requested anything from her, she has always been uh, right in time to, to help. So uh, 
Well, it is not uh, something that we're, we're not dealing with uh, issues of uh, maybe uh, research or something here. It's basically experiential, like things I went through before I came here of getting through to this place. Well, I started my journey in Nigeria. Um, like uh, uh, Dr. Joyce actually said, I studied sociology and anthropology in Nigeria. Um, we call the school OAU, Obafemi Awolo University in Nigeria. If I have any Nigerian on this, uh, uh, in this uh, room right now, the person probably would, must know, is a must. You can't be a Nigerian and not know, hear about OAU. So, yeah, so the, the journey actually began. I've, I've actually had the mind of studying abroad a long time, but I didn't know, I never thought of it coming I me mean, this way. And I don't think I've ever really thought about United States actually. When I began to know this idea so much, <clears throat> it was actually during my 300 level, I started thinking about what's the next thing when everybody, in this school was were saying that, oh, we are graduating very soon. And they were very happy. So what was running through my mind was basically what is going to be the next thing. I wasn't so joyful. And the reason is not so far. I started my, I mean, my undergraduate education very, very late based on some circumstances. You can imagine somebody starting a university education uh, when he's already above 30 years. So that's, that's one of the motivations actually. So I needed a leverage. I needed something that could at least give me a better chance. So I started thinking about what am I going to do? So I attended, I attended um, a kind of seminar, uh, which, is, which was organized by one of my lecturers back in OAU. And we attended the program and one of the, um, senior colleagues, let me just put it that way, who had studied in OAU and then tra I mean, traveled out to uh, Canada to continue his program, was inv invited because he was in town. So he shared his experience moving to Canada and that, I mean, gave me more encouragement about doing these things. So he shared his experience, shared the I mean, things that were needed. So. I started working towards it. The, those things I didn't have, I started working towards it. Like, okay, I needed to do this. You talked about your final, I mean, final two years that it had to be very good. So I started buckling up to see how I could uh, get things done. But unfortunately, the, the dream to move to uh, Canada was looking like unreal at the point in time because I, I tried re reaching out to this uh, uh, person, but on Twitter, because he's, he's one of the persons that uh, actually do stuff on Twitter. I don't know if anybody has ever come across, I think Olu of Canada also is, is the one. So, but he, maybe he's so busy because when he was here, he, he, we, I mean, shared some, I mean, he shared some kind of experience, how busy it could be and all that. And then when I got here also, I. I got a glimpse to what he was saying. So I couldn't reach out to him to get the direct approach and to know few things that I had to do. Then, um, so I just had to decide, okay, whatever happens. But then there is something that is still very, very important in my experience and that was COVID. Don't forget uh, in the introduction, it was said that I uh, finished my education in year 2019, yeah. That was actually it. We finished our exam December 2019. So that, that was the whole thing. So the whole of 2020, the whole of 2020 was, I was dealing with uh, the experience of COVID. I didn't have it, but you know what it means to be locked down and all, and all that. There was no other thing you could do. So everything I was doing as, as at that time was just, uh, attending online programs, of course, authority was one of the um, uh, one of my sources to different programs I attended. So that's 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 just from that part. So in the middle of that, I had to do something. A friend encouraged me 
to like I was I was planning to start doing um what is it called uh, online all these um freelance writing and all that so I set up an account and because I wanted to be truthful to myself I set up the account based on my real identity nothing was changed and I think somebody told me that oh if you once they see that you're from Nigeria they might they might not give you something to do and all that i said well if that's the case this is my true identity and i don't think i want to trade it for anything so let's let's sort and go so the person said do you have a linkedin account i said i do I've, I've had it a long time but i don't really do anything there and she was like okay you can update it and see what you can get that people get job from there so I did go back to my LinkedIn account. I mean, I did a lot of uh, things updated and I was able to add more people to my connection. And out of the people I added to my connection, I met a lady. I met a lady who actually uh, uh, became the game changer that got used for me as a game changer in this whole process. So I met her and we started talking and at a point, in fact, I think the second or third, uh, I mean, the messages that we exchanged, and she, she was like, don't you consider moving out of the country to do your master's degree or something? And I said, well, it's actually something I have been nursing in mind. And by the way, at a point in time, the issue of Sweden, I met one guy who is also a Nigerian, who is doing mentoring, I mean, who is mentoring people along the line of, uh, I mean, doing your master's degree and a PhD in Sweden. He's one of the very popular guys on the media. So I, by the time I looked at the requirement, I found out that I won't be able to do it, not because of my grade, not because of anything, but because my credentials are not, were not available as at that time. I would need my certificates and some other, a couple of other things, which as at that time, when in fact, as a matter of fact, my results were not processed yet in the university because of COVID. We just finished and then COVID started. So, so I just backed out. I was like, okay, let me find, I mean, let me get something to do while I, I wait COVID to go and then the university resume so that they can fix whatever has to be fixed. So, like I was saying, the lady said, don't you think of coming to the US for your program? I said, well, I don't mind, but look at me. I'm from a very, very humble background. Like we used to say in Nigeria, when you are not, when your family is not really okay financially, so you, you say you are from humble background. So I'm, I'm actually from an humble background. So I don't think she laughed and said, well, it's not what you are thinking. Like, even me, I came from an humble background and it doesn't take so much of your money. Just if you, if you are willing, I said, ah, for me, yeah, I'm, a, I, I, I'm very willing. So we started the process. She guided, I mean, she tried as much as possible to give me the information needed. And I started the journey little by little, little by little from searching for school I tried to do that since I, I had something I wanted to do in mind. So I started searching for school. I mean, good for me. She is also uh, studying sociology. So I started thinking about, okay, what school, which part of the US and all that. So that was how I started searching for schools. I got a notepad for myself. Unfortunately, I don't think I, I don't have the notepad yet. Maybe I brought it and I have not been able to find it or I didn't take it away from Nigeria. I, I would have shown it to you. So I had a notepad where I wrote everything, maybe searches like schools I've searched, the requirements and all that. So I write everything down and the next line of action, if she tells me anything I have to do, I write it down so that I don't forget. So. I can take it step by step. I didn't know she had an opinion that, oh, just like other people that she will give up. I mean, he will give up when the whole thing looks very stressful that you won't, won't fall through. But I kept moving 
And at the point, she had to express that, like, no, you are really impressing me. There was something she said I should do, which ordinarily to her, she felt could take hours. Or let me say, could take me till, till the second day before I responded to her. But in about four hours, I was done with it, and I sent the result back to her. She was like, wow, that this shows that you're actually interested, and I really appreciate that. So we moved on. And I started my application. Okay, before the application, um, she guided me through the process, things I should do, things I, I mean, things I should not do, things I should consider as a, I mean, I, as a, a plus, and things I should consider as things that could be against me. So she mentioned all that, and I was very, very conscious, conscious of that. And she also said, based on uh, financial status, that there were exams that would not be needed, and there are some that I mean, some that she would actually advise that I take. So, graduate record examination is one of the exams that she suggested. She also suggested I write TOEFL, but I said, look, I know that TOEFL to some degree. Uh, I mean, universities would not require that I write TOEFL because I'm from Nigeria and the basic language of instruction in Nigeria is English. So we are exempted, so I can avoid that. But GRE, like you said, I wanted to avoid GRE, but I had to write it eventually. So I wrote GRE. So I started the preparation for my GRE. I think sometimes around October, October last year. I, I joined Naira Land as a platform, an online platform called Naira Land. So she advised that I join so that I could source for informa more information from people I mean, of like minds. So I joined the platform and I got a lot of information. And I registered for my, pro for my exam, I think sometimes around uh, maybe October ending or so. So I wrote the exam in December and I started the application. I've started doing some things like putting up my uh, SOP statement of purpose. I started that, I think around, um, yeah, it was, it was November. I started that in November. I started writing it and I will send it to her and then she will review and send back to me. So we did that for a couple of times, maybe like four times. So I, I didn't let that bore me. Well, that was, get, getting a review was something I learned from my undergraduate uh, uh, school from my supervisor, actually. Ah, he was, I shared this experience with uh, Dr. Joyce a couple of uh, days ago uh, about how I got encouraged to, to forge ahead. When I saw my review for chapter one, of my project, it was terrible. Like I had a lot of a lot of cancellation reds on my on my paper. I just closed my laptop. I said, I don't think I want to do this. This is terrible. Like somebody was commending me that you did well. And I had a lot of reds on my paper. What does he mean? If it were to be a lecturer that did not like me, I would have said maybe because he hated me, but and uh, as a matter of fact, and funny enough, he's also a member of uh, Author Aid, Author Aid Journal Club, uh, Social Sciences. I have two of my lecturers on the on the platform, so my supervisor is also one of them. Though he's always very passive, he just listens to stops and then, yeah. So when I saw that, I closed my laptop. I said, no, I don't think I want to do this. But at a point, I thought to myself, like, and I spoke to myself, like, look at you. This thing that you left undone, who is going to do it at the end of the day? I said to myself. Then it, it just takes you to take a step. And then I went back to it. I started reading the review from the least uh, difficult, and I started, I started moving. So that was the same approach I used to uh, I mean, to, to uh, sort the problems that she notified me about in the uh, SOP. So I moved on and my application actually started in, um, okay, my, my results came out in January. 
it wasn't super good, but at least it wasn't too bad. But yeah, so I started my application in, um, uh, I think, yeah, it was towards the end of January, yes, because my official result was available maybe around January 15. My I mean, official GRE result, I mean, was available around January 15. So I started my application, started uh, imputing my data into the system, the schools that I wanted to uh, attend by, I think, the end of January, because my applications were supposed to be due, at least two of my schools, the application will be due, due February 15. And I was going to apply to my present school, which is Mississippi State University and uh, Northern Arizona University in Arizona State. <clears throat> so those schools were the two schools. And then another school came in, which is um, West Illinois University. I think their own due date was around March. I think it was March ending. So, but these two schools I actually gave my energy to was Mississippi State and then Northern Arizona University. Then, so I started putting in my details, my information around in by towards the end of January, and I completed the application in uh, by February actually. So I think around February, February. Uh, 10th or 12th, my application was ready, just waiting for my reference letters from uh, two persons. My, the head of department from my department from, my, from OAU has actually done his own for the two schools, but I needed two other persons. So I was following up. I was following up. Thank God for the good relationship I had with my uh, professors back in the uh, you know, undergraduate university. So I could easily talk to them, even on phone, without seeing them face to face. Once they know it's me, oh, Binga, how are you? So we started talking. And actually one of them encouraged me, at least all of them, all of them. I, I had a good relationship with them. So it was so easy for me to approach them, to tell them what I wanted to do. And then they encouraged me and they gave me tips also, things to do. And they were readily available to give me references. So my reference was available at least for that night of 15th of February, thank God we had a uh, time lag. So my, the last person was able to uh, go through the process by 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Nigerian time, which was still within the time frame I had in US. So I had my application completed. Um, I was getting email back and forth from the two schools. So I actually got admission from the two schools. Northern Arizona University first. There I applied to because they didn't have major sociology. They had applied sociology. So I, I applied there to study applied sociology. And then I was given admission, but they said there was no funding. But I could apply to some other on campus, a graduate assistantship, and all that. So I tried to apply, and there was nothing. I, I couldn't get anything. So I decided, though in the, the international office said they would give me $10,000 if I was able to provide $33,000 uh, statement of account to complement. I said, well, I don't think I have that. So I emailed the grad coordinator that I needed this. And once I couldn't get, and maybe a couple of weeks after, maybe like two weeks or so, I heard back from Mississippi State. They also gave, gave me admission. In the process, let me share this. In the process, uh, there was an experience I had that was that nearly got me out of myself. I think at the decision-making point from Mississippi State, they reached back to me and said, we need you to send your certificate. I was completely out of myself. And then OAU, because of COVID and their their yeah, supremacy kind of uh, approach to things and all that. So they, had, they, they delayed a lot about approving our result because they said, no, they won't 
I mean, do Senate meetings. So that actually was a very senior, serious panic for me because it was looking like this admission process was going to fall through. But if it falls through and I don't have document to back myself up, how do I deal with it? That means I won't be able to do it. So I was really afraid. But as God would have it, they eventually were able to do something about it and uh, it was sorted. So then when they requested for my certificate, which I knew would not be available even in the next one year, <laughs> I reached out to my uh, HOD and said, sir, this is my experience. Uh, he said, well, right now there's nothing we can do because even your result has not been approved. I used unofficial transcripts for my application. So if he said your result has not been approved yet because the Senate has refused, I mean, refused to see it because of COVID. So there's nothing we can do. We can't even give you um, to whom it, it may concern to just manage with and all that. He said, just, just pray that it falls through. Tell them that because of COVID, you are having this kind of experience. So I emailed the grad school back in Mississippi that this is my experience. COVID and all that has hindered the uh, university from opening. And, they, and as at that time, the university just opened like maybe like a, uh, two or like three weeks. That was when they requested. So I was able to use that excuse. And they said, they said, I mean, they didn't let me get back to me. But the next thing I saw, few hours after that, was um, a letter of admission and funding. And it wasn't just just a graduate assistantship that with I mean with half funding. It was full funding. It was full funding. Yes, yes. The university had uh, to do seventy one percent. Why my department would do twenty nine percent of my funding, and I also had um, uh, health insurance uh, coupled with my uh, opportunity. So that's how the whole thing went. And then I started planning. Then the next thing was another big deal was a visa because getting visa in Nigeria is like going through the needle eye, passing through the needle eye. <laughs> Though people will say like, oh, if it's a, a student visa, it's always very easy, but it, that's not the case in Nigeria. Let me give you an example. My mentor here, like my friend who actually guided me through this process, um, for I me, mean, I had to go through visa interview two times. The first time she was denied. Then the second time she got it. Another friend that we came in together was denied two different times. The first time denied, the second time denied, the third time, that was my, the year that I got my own uh, visa approved. So she, go, I mean, he also got denied. So the fear was there. And another factor that was with my fear was my age. Don't forget I told you I finished, I mean, I started my undergraduate when I, I was above 30. So, so I was running to 40 already. <laughs> so, and then I wasn't married. I'm, I'm still not married up till now. So my friend told me, this is a very big uh, red flag for me. Like they will say, you are this old, you don't have home time because you don't have family. When you, are, you don't have family, they consider you as somebody who does not have home time. Well, what's bringing you back? Because the idea is that when you travel for your studies, you should come back. Don't just go and congest the population in America. So we expect you to come back and all that. We, that that's in Nigeria, we call, we, there's a slang we use. We say Japa, you want to Japa. That is, you want to run out of the country to another country. So, <laughs> so that was the context, like, no, we don't want you to go. That's, that's the idea of the nine people, I mean, visa. So I had to face that also, what would I do and all that. So I went to the, I went for the interview and as God would have it, I had it approved. That was another milestone that God helped me through. So, as at that point, I knew all I needed was money. So I started 
trying to raise money. Um, family actually supported me from the beginning, from the beginning. Um, the reason why I said I have to thank God is just because this whole thing was just once, 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 once. I, it was just one attempt all. My, my, internet, my, my passport, Nigerian passport, international passport was the first one I, I, like, I just applied to it because of uh, uh, this program. I got it, I applied to schools once. I got admitted and with funding. And I also went to the I mean, uh, embassy for a visa interview, interview once and I got approved. So it was more like a magic to me. It was, it was just God walking through for me. So that was, uh, sorry, I, just give me a minute. I think my, I thought my battery would last me. Let me just oh, connect. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, just and, I, one... and I know now you will also fast forward to us to your experience in now the land of the free and the home of the brave hey. <laughs> in the United States. Quickly, uh, let me let me, because, let me. Um, if you can um, take the next ten minutes, then we will have at least ten minutes for a um, discussion. So oh, okay, uh, I'll do that quickly. No, so far, you're doing well. That was really really good detail. All right, thank you. Now, yeah, let, let, um, I know now you're going into when you landed and all. <laughs> okay, yeah, I I entered you know, the United States through uh, Miami, Florida, Miami International Airport. I think I landed around four p.m. U.S. time, and I I was joyful. I thank God, I was joyful, and then. That was how the experience started. And then I had to take a, another flight to Memphis. So let me just uh, stop from that transit. So when I got to Mississippi, I the first thing was, I, I felt like, oh, this place doesn't look like what I was expecting because uh, the school is located in a town that I will, as based on my experience in Nigeria, I wouldn't call a city, but they call it a city here. Is is a Starkville is like, I think twenty five thousand to thirty thousand population. So I was looking like, oh gosh, where is this place? Then the issue of racism, people have talked about it a lot. I'm going to mention that before I finish. So my experience, I it wasn't cold as I expected. I thought it was going to be badly cold so i was prepared for that but unfortunately we came in in summer actually so it wasn't cold it was very very hot very very hot not too hot anyway so we started dealing with that we started acclimatizing we started our documentation and everything the first thing i had to do officially was to do presentation that was the second day i entered my 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 town the town i mean my school so I had to do a presentation. So throughout that night, it wasn't throughout anyway, at least till the midnight, because my, my slide was not presented. I mean, it was not prepared yet. So I had to prepare my slide and all that. I was going to I mean, use a theory. So I did that quickly and I went for the presentation. Uh, it was good. Like when you had professors, people you have never met, white, all of them, two people from my department, another person from psychology, your department, uh, Dr. Joyce. <laughs> so they were there and other students, all white too. It was only myself and my friend. He was, he's also a Nigerian, so we're going to do the presentation. So when it was my turn, I think I was the second person to present. So I didn't know what the expectation was. If it were back in Nigeria, I, I knew what I could say. So I just started and at a point, I saw the graduate coordinator nodding, like giving affirmation. So I knew I, I was getting things right. So I was happy. So quickly, I finished that and it was all good. So that was the first thing that made me feel like, oh, I think I'm welcome. Okay. Then the experience with the, lecturer, with the lecturers there was very, very good. It wasn't as, as, as I thought would be. They, were, they have been very, very friendly very, very friendly. Then people would call me and ask about the issue of racism. Like, how are they treating you? 
we had that when they say black people, they think, I said, well, I don't know if it exists outside of the academic environment, but my experience um, so far has been very awesome. Like you have them coming around you, they will tell them, tell you if you need a help that you should reach out. I can remember one of my professors actually had to give me a ride. Actually had to give me a ride to the bank. In fact, that day, we, we, my, myself, my friend, we already ordered for Huba when he, I mean, when the lecturer reached out, like, okay, I know you are going to so, so please, uh, don't, don't hesitate to call me if you need a ride. And I told him that, oh, we're already in uh, the Uber going to the place, except if you want to come and take us from the bank. And he said, no problem. So he drove down, he left what he was doing in the department and drove down and had to wait for us for like 15, 15 minutes. I, could, I wasn't expecting that. So, and he's white. He had invited us to his house for a dinner. He is still white. One of my professors actually uh, had a policy that all the students would have to meet her on a lunch where you discuss a lot of things and, and all that. She is white. My graduate coordinator, white. Everybody, we had a very warm reception and they care so much about us. There was some, an issue that I had with a, a particular document that was supposed to be available, which I had problem with. They swing, like they just had to come in for help and they tried all, it, all they could. Without them, I probably would still not have that uh, uh, document right now, which is a uh, social security number. If you, if you know what it means to have that here. Number one, I won't be paid by the university based on my uh, uh, teaching assistantship and some other things that could come around it. So for their help, I was able to get it after struggling with it for like three weeks or so. <clears throat> so I didn't see racism coming against me as far as I'm concerned. The only set of people I think I have some level of uh, racist feeling like it does it look like these people are racist towards me are uh, even black americans and i could uh, somebody some people give explanation to that that this they see us as people who are who uh, are here to take the opportunity they are supposed to be enjoying that they fought for their lives and we are here as opportunists. Well, I said, well, that's not my own headache. <laughs> so we, went, we weren't the one who affected you and all that. So that's just by the way. And then uh, in academics, which is very, very important, uh, by God's grace, I'm not doing so badly. More importantly, there is a cause that we call theory. Those in, I'm, I'm sure every discipline would have one theory or the other. So. Uh, theory was a big deal in Nigeria, but here I'm flying, like I'm really flying higher in theory. Like I can say that I'm one of the best in the class in theory. So I mean, I, I thank God for that. Then other courses too, I'm, I'm doing so well. I wasn't expecting that it would be that easy, but this has to be said it is very, very challenging studying here in the United States. I'm not scaring anybody away. If I've, I've actually called people back in Nigeria that I know should be here without them asking me to say, I, I want to come. I would call them like, don't you consider this kind of opportunity? And I'll keep telling them the juicy things that they could get, the opportunities they could get and all that. So I'm not scaring anybody away from it, but I just want to put this into your mind that it is very stressful here. Why? Because virtually every course, every course we give you homework and they have due dates. You do sometimes you can negotiate it. If you talk to them, they can bend the rule for you. But I don't want to do, I don't want to keep negotiating and all that. So I just have to make it through. <clears throat> So you have to walk your ass out, just like people will say, walk yourself out to make sure you meet the deadline. 
So that's it. Now, for my theory classes, I would I can remember you have to read sometimes like 200 pages of material, 250 pages of material, and have to answer like 20 questions. Though it won't be too long, or at least you are writing like uh, three paragraphs on each of the question to solve, to answer a question. And you have other courses that are going to require the same thing within a space of one week. And there's no week would pass without you uh, taking care of something like that. So it's it's one of those things that is very, very uh, stressful, yeah. yeah. And exams are very, very stressful also. I mean, in the, in the middle of exam, as I speak with you, um, grading, that's another thing. <clears throat> I thought my grading was over and all of a sudden my, my professor told me that we have one exam more. And for each exam, I'll be grading 90 students. I still had leftover of, uh, I think, almost 40 students to grade for an assignment. So all those were jam packed together with my exam. I submitted an exam on Tuesday and uh, another one I have to turn in tomorrow. That, that's the final term paper for, for this term. So I have to turn it in tomorrow, which is very stressful. As I speak with you, I've not started because I have to finish my grading today. That's, I have the deadline for my grading today. And I still have a couple of students, maybe like 36 to go right now. So it is very, very stressful, but you can go through it and uh, uh, be successful. So I think I would uh, have to stop here so that I, question can be active possible. Thank you so much. It is such an honor to sit with you virtually and learn from your experience. I for sure have gathered a lot. I have so many more questions. I will not uh, take over the space, but I just want to ask if there was anything around your accent, how you speak, as well as your dress code, if you ever wore maybe your Nigerian attire. I know the Nigerian attire is splendid. <laughs> so that's yeah. just my, my question about how that was received. And of course, we know the university is a closed culture, but quite cosmopolitan. I happen to know Mississippi State University because both my parents got full scholarships there. So okay. it's quite close to my heart. So I know I visited the place also uh, okay. in 2018. So it's it's just amazing to hear your experience. But did you have anyone um, on, did you notice different accents? And did you, did you think other people noticed your accent or like were trying to follow how you pronounce words? And then also about dressing, that would be my question. And I'll also open up to the floor now. Uh, if anyone has a question, please type in the chat or raise your hand. Um, I'm already seeing some comments. I'll read them after this, just to give people time to let it sink in and so that they can reflect on the questions they want to ask. So maybe we start with mine and then we'll take a few more. Okay, let me ask, let me answer your question real quickly. Um, our culture was much appreciated. There was a day myself and my friend, you know, because we are two, it makes it more interesting. Myself, my, my, uh, my friend and I, we decided to do our cultural attire because we felt like, okay, after summer, we won't be able to wear these things again. And we brought them. So we wore it <clears throat> to class. And once we entered, the students were like, wow, this is amazing. I like your dress white people <laughs> they appreciated it and we wore it to church one day you know just like you said university is a close environment and people might appreciate you but we wore it to church which was a more open environment to everybody in diversity so the pastor everybody around were like, oh i like your dress though they have been seeing it on because we had other nigerians in uh, the church and people from across africa uh, so we're there also. So they actually like it. Then accents, accents, we, have, we people would always want to be like, please, can you say that again? <laughs> it's, it's quite funny. So they had problem listening, I mean, hearing us a lot sometimes, but they appreciate, there's one thing they do, they appreciate uh, our spoken English. They say, oh, you speak good English, but accents, they have problem listening to us. And we also do have 
problem listening to them sometimes, but uh, I think we are getting better right now. When we started, it was more like uh, 60, I mean, let me see, like 70% uh, off. But right now, I think we are like 60, 70% on. So if we do not hear anything, it will be like 30% of what they say. Uh, yeah, okay. so that that's okay. it. Thank you. That's so it. I think I can now read the chats. We have Mildred Ojiambo says, hi, I'm a member of Ada Africa Journal. I look forward to hearing about his and others' experiences in studying abroad. Then Haruna Liman, Abu Bakar Tafawa Balewa University Teaching Hospital, Bauchi, Nigeria. Mm. Uh, Haruna is interested in research in any aspect of urology. So uh, he says, I'm delighted to be here mm. and I'd like to join the author aid journal club. Haruna, you're welcome to join. Okay. And then Ahmed Abi says, kindly mister, put your LinkedIn account so that we can communicate with you further. <laughs> so Ahmed okay. wants to be your friend on LinkedIn. And then okay. Rosina says, splendid explanation. Samuel wow. says, the experience is amazing. How did you handle the culture shock? Mm. Okay, <laughs> culture shock. Thank you for that. Uh, I really appreciate it. Now, how I handled the culture shock, because I'm a sociologist. So culture shock was not new to me. I was expecting it. So there were a lot of things that I saw. I just felt like I'm in a new environment. So it is expected. It is expected. So some would be very terrifying like when you see some food you're like he who is going to eat this okay recently i visited a mexican restaurant oh it's a pity i <laughs> i'm not using my phone i would have shared it so when they we we had problem dealing with what to eat when when you are given menu so you don't know what to pick that's one of the challenges we have as a culture i mean cultural i mean differences so when i saw the 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 uh, menu, we just decided to pick something. It was just a celebration of one of us, do, I mean, on his birthday. So we had to pick our menu. And when they brought the food, it was more like they brought sacrifice. If, if <laughs> because different, like, different things. And we were scared, like, what, what is this? But at the end of the day, we ate it and it was good. So majorly what has been our, I mean, shock, the two, I mean, it was two, I mean, two, it's been two things. The first thing is how they dress here. You see a lot of females wearing what we call bomb shorts. In Nigeria, you dare not wear that and go outside your building, not to talk of you are going to a public space. So we saw that a lot, even officials wear bomb shorts during summer. Yeah, you see almost all their body outside, like, yeah, that's that's the first thing. The second so Spina thing. Has sent an emoji. She's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so the second thing, food. Like I said, so we had a lot of problem, but we were helped. Because in Nigeria, you're used to solid food, and you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Though we brought in some of those, but we knew that with time we won't be able to go through them. We couldn't bring in palm oil because it was against the immigration rule, but. Uh, thanks, I mean, thanks to one of the lecturers, the one I said came to give us, give us a ride. He, he traveled out of the state to another state and there are African stores in some other states. So he was able to buy some things that would be of uh, need for us. And it was on my bed dish, he brought it. It was more like somebody presented uh, <laughs> a lot of gifts to us on my bed day. He spent a lot. I think he spent over two hundred dollars to get those things, and not requiring for that from us. So that's another thing about racism. Like, just to explain to you that we didn't experience racism. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. We have three more minutes, and I would like to give a chance to anyone who would like to raise their hand and uh, ask using their voice or comment. Um, for somebody who requested for my LinkedIn, so just typed in, type, type in the name I sent on the I mean, on the uh, platform, so that you you get to me directly. Oh, so your LinkedIn name is your name. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Ahmed, you can become his friend online. <laughs> 
Does anybody have any questions, comments uh, as we finish? Raise your hand or just unmute. We are not so many. Uh, let's make this interactive. I'll give chance to one person. There's any. As uh, the person is raising their hand, let me just say I've gotten a number of themes from your presentation today. And thank you for sharing so heartily your experience of studying abroad. I've gotten a lot of values, uh, which are the core of living and learning, such as tenacity, you know, determination. You are laser focused. There were so many distractions and delays and uh, COVID was one of them, but you navigated them gracefully, you know. I think that was really, really well done. I'm also getting uh, another value of connection, you know, remembering yes. the community and where you've come from and going with them in, in the sense of, you know, they sent referrals and they endorsed you and that's how you were actually taken, um, you know. And then um, you've been quite flexible and fluid in, in assimilating into the new culture, which has been quite useful for your program. And you seem to be quite passionate in your field of study and also what you've chosen to do around food revolution, uh, you yes. know, for Africa through social systems, which, you know, uh, food is a major, major liberating force for our continent. So congratulations, very well done. And we'll be waiting maybe after you complete the postgraduate to hear what's next, you know, what you're gonna okay. do next and <laughs> okay. where you're going with this. I think uh, the, the world is now your oyster. Um, I'm really, really honored to have uh, Satya and learn from you and I'm sure everybody else is. So if there's no other question, um, I'm going to give a few more seconds. Let me check if there's any question, anyone raising. OK, it looks like we've all been following keenly. And uh, maybe to ask everybody, if you can summarize in one word, what did you get from today's webinar? Uh, if you can type in the chat or unmute to say in one word, what is it? What have you learned? So I see Jennifer Barmosha saying, wow, amazing info there. Thank you so much. Host Thank you so much, story. Jennifer. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer says, amazing. Anybody else? In one word, what did you get? If you could put it in one word. Ahmed Abi says, never give up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ahmed. <laughs> I, I look forward to having you as a friend, at least one person from Nigeria I can see here. Right, yeah. Oh, Samuel says determination. Mm, great, uh, yeah. Aruna, resilience. resilience. Mm. Ah. Okay, is it Aruna that is actually from Nigeria? I don't know. Yes, yes, it's oh, Aruna. Okay, yes. Aruna, okay, okay. I don't mind meeting you, please. You, you yeah, can just nice. connect. Yeah. You can also share your email address or any other. Okay. Email. I don't know. Uh, let me let me quickly type my email address. Yes. Anyone else wants to say in one word what they learned today? I think for me it would be tenacity. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually that's actually the word. That's mm. actually the word. So that's I, I just typed in my email address. You can reach out to me. Oh, yeah. Great. And he has also sent his. So yours is elufisang at gmail.com. Thank okay. you so much. It was wonderful. I don't see any other comments or questions. Uh, it was just an amazing time. Um, Karuna says thanks a lot. <laughs> mm. So if we don't have any other comments, I think we can call it a day and uh, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Dr. Joyce, for this opportunity. And I also want to appreciate uh, Tabitha for her efforts. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jonah Aid. Thank you. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, uh, Andy, too, uh, for every effort put in place. So I really appreciate this. And uh, it's an honor 
to be invited to come and speak here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Is that a Mississippi State uh, T-shirt? That's your logo. Yes. This. Oh, yeah. That, that's that's it. Sociology. Is, that's your department. Yeah. That, yeah, that's my department. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, the US is big on banners and where you exactly. Come from. Yeah, that's <laughs> yes, yes. That, yes. So want, want to see very M state. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you see M state, you know that person must be from Mississippi State. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you so much. I know you. It took uh, a lot for you to be here today. Early morning. It must be seven a.m. where you are now. It's four yes. p.m. in Kenya. <laughs> and we really, really appreciate you. You're okay. welcome. I really appreciate you too. Okay. And Jennifer Barmosho asks, "Can we get a recording, please? I will do my best. Uh, this session was recorded, so potentially, yes, the recording should be available on YouTube. Thank you for the question." All right. Have a nice day. Uh, you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Yeah. yeah, bye. All right. Okay, you're welcome, Jennifer. I will definitely send it. <laughs> okay. I'm ending the meeting.